Okay, everybody, if you're joining us tonight, um, I've been working on this personal development series since the beginning of January, and we I've just been sharing with you every week the stuff that has just absolutely just made a difference in my life, and I just want to to uh, share and add value to you too. So for those that are joining us live tonight, um, welcome. I'm excited to have you here. And um, let me back up a little bit. If you're joining us for the first time, you may be watching on YouTube because we've been public, you know, putting these public and leaving them up for you because it's just been such great information. Um, my name is Ruthie Gage and um, I'm just excited to be here. I'm a wife, a mother, and as of this week, a grandmother. <laughs> it's going to take me a while to get used to that. So anyway, uh, just really excited about the new year and us being more this year. That's what we've been talking about. And so I had the opportunity to go to several conferences. John C. Maxwell, my absolute favorite um, personal development entrepreneur and I've really been diving down into the 15 laws of invaluable growth now he's got a ton of books and I'll mention a couple of them no matter what you get or what you start with it's going to change your life just put it that way um, I have I did have the honor to get a uh, picture taken with him and have his newest book signed which is good leaders ask great questions um, he also has a great book called how successful people think that one is very life-changing and then um, I've got another one by him that um, is all about your dreams and goals but I didn't want to spend a lot of time on that uh, I was touching on some of the different laws of growth and how it will change your life it it doesn't matter what you're doing with your life you know what direction you're heading in your life whether it's professional or personal this will change your life with your personal relationships as well because you are growing you and anytime we get better everything around us gets better and our relationships gets better so we touched on the law of intentionality and of course the law of awareness of with the law and intentionality just to back up we were talking about you know what you do if you want it to be dynamic it has to be specific it has to be purposeful and so being intention in the areas of your life, the areas you pay attention to, you'll notice they probably go well. They're, you're probably well organized. You probably feel like you have a little bit of control over things and they are probably flourishing. And so, you know, what happens a lot of times we get so busy in one area or one or two areas that something falls apart and it's just we're not intentional we just kind of walked away from it we're not paying attention to it so whatever area of your life you feel needs more growth or needs to get better start applying that law of intentionality to it because it absolutely will work um, and of course the law of awareness is just being aware of um, all these things you know in the different areas and and paying attention you know um knowing what you're doing and why and living every day with purpose so you know that is kind of touching backtracking on that and if you want to get caught up on these i kept them up you can go back and look at them they're on youtube or on our um our team page but we have them available and of course there's 15 laws and I'm not going to go over all of them I would rather you just read them from him yourself but these are some of the ones he covered in the conference um, last week we covered a couple of them and um, I believe it was um, the first two the third one was you know, just all about you know the the law of you know inspiration you know the different gaps of growth in our life and when you get past that we start talking today on the law of reflection and what I love about this one is you know we're all guilty of it you know we spend a lot of plates particularly we women we spend a lot of plates we wear a lot of hats the law of reflection reminds us is to stop and reflect 
you know, we're go, 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 go all the time. And I know many of us feel like the more we put on our plate and the faster we go and the more loaded up, we're more productive and be, we're more successful. And it's absolutely the opposite. The more ha you have on your plate, you become watered down versions of yourself in every area with your family, with your, your, your children, with what you want to do in your professional life, your personal life, your everything gets watered down and it just is like a house of cards at some point. What the law of reflection talks about is, you know, to, you know, to go forward, sometimes you have to cut back on some things and you just have to find time to stop and reflect. Um, I thought it was great how in, at his conference, John C. Maxwell was talking about, you know, the, the best coaches, like when you're watching a football game or any kind of athletic event, he said, you know, the best coaches stop and that's why they have, you know, the, they have half time and they have huddle time and they have time, you know, to stop and reset and reflect and just basically have time to get caught up. And so what he was encouraging is that every day take time, whether you call it your, you know, your quiet time or, you know, time just to read. He really encouraged you to have one place that you always go that you'll never be disturbed. He called, um, he said he actually has an office. He has a, he has a place. He has a chair that all he does is he goes there and thinks every day. And he does it. He starts his day that way. And he said, nothing happens in that chair except for him just thinking. That's his time to gather his thoughts, to clear his mind and to reflect. Um, and I just, I love that because so many times we think the faster we go and the more we have on our plate from dawn till dark, we, at, at, we are becoming more productive when actually we're not. And so he says, make sure that every single day you have, you know, time chiseled out where you have time to quietly reflect on what you're going to do and what you've done, but just have time for your thoughts and just to be quiet and to be still. He said, learning to pause causes growth to catch up with you. So say if you're learning something new or you're studying for a test or you know what it's like, we've all done it, crammed for that test the night before, what happens? You might get through that test and pass it, but do you remember anything on that test? Because I know I don't. If I cram for a test, that stuff is gone. But if you strategically plan and learn and think through the process that by pausing and thinking through and having time for all that to be to be learned you actually create growth and learning because you paused and took time so learning to pause causes your growth to catch up with you um, just because we all get older does not mean we get better. That goes back to the law and intentionality. You know, you have to be intentional even on your personal growth. So remember that, that you have to be, you know, purposeful in growing yourself on the inside. And that's why we le read these books to make us better so that everything around us and everyone around us becomes better. Um, he says every day, Ask yourself, what did, what did I learn? What did I love? So always realize that whether you feel like you're struggling in an area or there's failure, just remember that there really is not any failure. There's just lessons learned. So that's very important for us to remember that because we get caught up and then we don't move forward. There's always lessons to be learned. And that's just real important in our personal growth. And we have to be reminded of that. But that pretty much is that law of reflection. It's, there's not a lot of information on it. There's more in the book. But the thing of it, it is very important part of our day. And we should stop and pause and be thinking about the things we learned and where we want to grow. Um, he says it, it, success 
uh, successful people spend a, a good bit of time just reflecting. Think of people who are going to write a book. Um, they usually have to go up in the mountains and find some place where they are not only inspired, but where it's quiet and they can think. Anything that you're going to do well, you need to put thought behind it. All great coaches have a game plan. So any game you go to, you know, people say my coach is great. He's good. He, you know, they all have a game plan. You know, there's not one team that's going to show up there and go, ah, we're just here, but we don't know why we're here. So first of all, you got to know why you're there and what you're doing. But all good, good coaches have a game plan. But he said only great coaches have the ability to make what he calls half time adjustments. And sometimes when we're stopping to reflect, that's where we make our adjustments. Sometimes when we just keep going and keep pushing through and we don't stop to pause, we just make a mess out of things. And so it's always good to stop so that we can tweak and make adjustments. And you know, failure, a lot of people think of making adjustments, oh, I failed at that. No, you just learned a way it didn't work. So just keep in mind, if you want to be great in all the areas of your life, be willing to stop and make adjustments. It's just learning how to be better. That was the fourth law of growth. And the next one I wanted to run by really quickly, and then I was going to read something for you tonight, is the law of consistency. He says, motivation gets you going, but discipline keeps you growing. And so you got to be consistent in the things you do. Otherwise, you're just dabbling in it. I tell everybody that I, <clears throat> excuse me, that I personally coach that you're either in it every day, you're either in it to win it, or you're just dabbling in it. It's just a hobby. And so consistency builds that growth. And you, you got to get up and just stay in the basics. And actually, he said that. Whatever you're doing, just stay in the basics. Get up and do the same things every day that you know, know that work. Don't, don't ever get away from the basics because if you get too far from them, what happens is before you realize it or by the time you realize it, you're so far away that it takes longer to get caught up. And it's just like having to start the train over <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the last couple of things that he was talking about uh, under consistency, other than staying in the basics, getting up every day, uh, being faithful. You know, there's a lot, um, even in the Bible, where it talks about, you know, being faithful in your task and what you're doing, being diligent. You know, Proverbs talks about you know, being a diligent and faithful you know, work or whatever you put your hand to. So if you don't want to dabble in it, you need to be diligent and you need to show up every day. Um, leaders don't necessarily develop overnight. Um, he said, you know, a lot of times we think, you know, and, and we do a lot of times in business, and he is a business developer, um, motivational coach as well. But in business, you know, we are looking for leaders. We're looking for people who are self-motivated. They're self-starters. They don't need a lot of hand-holding. And you do find people like that. But bottom line, at some point, to be a leader and to move on, you have to be growing yourself. And that takes time. We are all here. You know, growth, you never stop. You never do until the day you die. If, if you do, you're not really going to move forward in a certain area. So just go ahead and accept that, you know, growth has to be intentional every day and it has to be perfect, purposeful, but it's going to be something that you're going to need to do every day if you always want to feel productive and successful. He says decision making is overrated, but decision managing is underrated. So I, you, to me, that was an aha moment, you know, making a decision, you know, yeah, that's very, very, you know, it's a very good point to, you know, starting your, you know, becoming successful. You got to make that decision first. You got to take some action, but managing, managing every decision you make, you know, how you respond, you know, to situations in life or circumstances or other people, that is what's real important. And that's where you really need to stay in the pocket. 
says it takes an average person 17 days to stop doing what they started. So, you know, you're getting kind of close to that 21 day habit right there. But, you know, if you've got someone who has been really in the pocket and they're doing well and they're going forward and you've been coaching them or working with them, you know, whether it's a physical journey or a financial journey or whatever it is, when you start seeing them pull back and pull back and pull back, it takes an average of about 17 days before they're just gone. So they're either going to respond to you or they're not. Um, but at the end of the day, that's their decision. But that is about the average it takes for someone to stop doing what they started doing. That I think that's why he says every day stay right there in your basics because you won't wake up one morning wondering what happened and where everything fell apart. Um, but pretty much with the law of consistency, that one, is, that's, that's pretty much everything he had on it. You got to find things you're good in. He did say that. And he said, stay right there in them. So once again, you know, we talked about, you know, how he said, when it comes to choices, you want to focus on your weaknesses, like, um, your choices of, you know, um, how you eat and becoming healthier, your choice of your attitude. Are you going to wake up and, you know, how, you, how are you going to get, you know, a handle on that? You know, when it comes to making choices, you need, you, you need to improve that and work on those. But when it comes to your life and your skills, he says focus mainly on your strengths. So what are you good at? What comes natural? What feels like when you wake up every morning is effortless. You're going to do it. If no one paid you for it, you're going to do it with joy and it just brings you fulfillment every day and satisfaction. What, what are your strengths? Write them down. You know, the way they become specific and they become real is seeing them on paper, write down all your strengths. And then that's where you want to stay in because that's what's going to give you the most joy and that's where you're going to find your bliss. So, you know, um, I just wanted to share a couple more of those laws. We're going to finish up next week with that, the law of environment and a couple other things. Um, we had, I'll also be sharing, um, one of the speakers was life without limits book. This was, um, and don't even ask me how to pronounce Nick's last name. But you can YouTube or Google uh, this fella, watch his YouTube. He, um, you could have heard a pin drop in the convention center. He's absolutely amazing. And his attitude um, and his faith will totally just blow your mind. We just, he was just jaw dropping, amazing motivational speaker. And his story is absolutely incredible. But I'll be sharing some things that he shared with us at the conference. But I want to end tonight with a couple of things. And yes, I am reading two or three books. I love personal development. It just makes me feel alive. I love growing me. I want to get better. Um, when I look in the mirror, I see my competition every day. And I also see the person that I want to be better, you know, uh, than I was yesterday. And, you know, that's, that's something else that John C. Maxwell says. He said, if, if you weren't better than yesterday, then you weren't better at all. So you want every day just to be a little bit better in whatever area of life that you are challenged in or you just want to grow in. But I want to leave with you with um, another conference that I went to was um, Sandy Krakowski's. She's absolutely amazing. And her new book, be more is something that I have been reading every single day, even if it's just a page or two, because it's encouraging, it's inspiring, and it's all about believing more in yourself. But something jumped off the page to me today, and I wanted to share it with you. And um, this particular book has like 77 secrets to a powerful life. So this is what jumped off the page to me. She says, one of our biggest barriers to success is our tendency to prepare for failure. We try to protect ourselves from disappointment and to avoid expecting too much out of life. And, you know, that's the thing is we innately, you know, we, we just tend to 
constantly protect ourselves from failure. And so a lot of times we don't move forward. And that's why you know, John, one of John C. Maxwell's books is failing forward. Because if you're not moving forward, it's just like, look at a child before a child is walking. A child doesn't go from the crib to jumping out to sprinting across the floor. Um, they pull up and they fall down. They pull up and fall down. And pretty soon they're taking a couple of steps and they fall and they learn to balance. And then they get halfway across the room and they fall down. They're learning, but you don't see them sit down and fuss and say, I want you to carry me for the rest of my life because they want to do it on their own. They are failing forward. So we have to look at life as a child starting and in areas that we want to grow as a child starting to walk. Know that you're going to learn along the way, just like a child learns to walk, a child learns to speak, and anything a child. We can learn so much from children. Just watch them, and as they're learning through their schools and they're, they're getting, you know, more education, you know, for some reason we think as soon as we graduate from high school or college, we're supposed to stop growing and learning, and that is farthest from the truth. If anything, we need the skill sets for life to be able to handle life and handle the circumstances and handle how we are going to respond to it because the response to life situations and circumstances is 90% of, you know, what we will get out of it. You know, it's 10% of what life gives us. It's 90% of the way you respond. So learning those skills are going to be life changing. Um, but, you know, we have to realize that, you know, Failure is just a part, you know, don't be so afraid of it. You know, you really need to be jumping out into those scary places every day. I challenge myself to do some, one thing scary every day, whether it's speaking to someone I normally wouldn't have and reaching out to them, whether it's learning a new skill, something in my life so that I feel like I'm moving forward. I feel empowered and I am feeling a power, living a powerful life just something that's going to help me just feel like I did better and that life was more than just surviving that day. It was thriving. So remember the acronym is the fear. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real. And if you will write those acronyms down and place it somewhere on your bathroom mirror or on the kitchen and the on the refrigerator or whatever, wherever you need to see it, you know, in your car. Fear stands for false evidence appearing real. If you will get that in your mind, in your spirit, you will not be afraid of, uh, of near as much. You'll be trying new things, and you'll find out that with everything that you conquer or overcome, instead of standing back, you move forward and you're willing to fail forward. If you remember, it's just false evidence. It appears real. That's what our mind tells us. Don't believe everything you think, but just know that by doing something different and new and challenge yourself every day, it's that challenge. It's going to change your life. So I hope that helped you this week. Um, I hope you found something good, um, something valuable out of this. Um, and I'll end with this last quote. Um, when we all are full of doubt, we attract reasons to support that belief. Then our brains go to work seeking failure. Change that. And that is my goal for you, my wish for you, my homework for you this week is change whatever is making you afraid of moving forward. You know, um, because that's what you need to change. Make sure it's challenging. Make sure it's new. And make sure you're living a powerful life. I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for hanging out with me. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.